the EU and the US are on the path to creating a free trade agreement. The TTIP is expected to stimulate the economy through the standardization of legal regulations. Yet the question remains, is what is good for companies also good for us as citizens? Almost all of the advisors consulted by the negotiators represent corporate interests. The decisions being taken will have a widespread impact. Reason enough to keep a sharp eye on the negotiators. Yet this is precisely what is not happening. Negotiations are taking place behind closed doors. This does not look like democracy. What is at stake? What interests are behind the planned agreement? Hormone-treated meat, cloned cattle, chlorinated chicken and genetic engineering have taken hold in the US. The EU still prohibits all these things. Yet corporations have made their interests clear. For example, the US National Pork Producers Council has stated that it would not accept any result in which widespread hormonal therapy is still prohibited. In the US, the practice of fracking has been massively expanded to increase gas supplies. Under high pressure, a mixture of chemicals and water is compressed into the earth. This results in the contamination of drinking water and soil. The TTIP promises cheap gas exports, but at what price? And who is liable for the damage caused? Environmental groups throughout the world reject fracking. In 2010, following the financial crisis, the US gave its administrative authorities the option to regulate foreign subsidiaries of US banks. This has angered the US banking industry. Yet it has found an ally in the EU, which has called for the recognition of weaker European laws. Significant proposals regarding bank regulation are once again at stake. Achievements made on both sides of the Atlantic are at risk. Workers' rights were hard won in this part of the world. In the US, however, there are hardly any enforceable protection rights against employers. No rights for the election of works councils or for trade unions to engage in collective bargaining. These achievements would be directly threatened by opening up competition to new markets. The so-called investor-state disputes that the TTIP will enable are particularly dangerous for the state and its citizens. If a law adversely affects the profits of a corporation, it can sue the state for damages, all at the taxpayer's expense. And lawsuits are more than likely, as expected profits are negatively impacted by environmental laws. Minimum wage legislation, higher taxes, or bans on individual products. What is problematic is that such complaints will not be heard before ordinary courts. So-called arbitration courts, composed of three attorneys, will be used, and their decisions are binding under international law. Free trade agreements can be very costly to taxpayers, as Canada is currently finding out thanks to NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. The US and Mexico are also signatories. The residents of Quebec voted in a referendum to protect the environment from fracking. A fracking company then sued the Canadian government for 250 million US dollars in damages. Grandiose promises of growth, prosperity and new jobs can't be trusted either. Experts estimate that NAFTA has cost 700,000 jobs in the US and has massively increased poverty in southern Mexico. This is in stark contrast to the fine words and predictions which won people over at the time and which we are now hearing once again. The winners of free trade agreements are solely banks and corporations. But we can still do something. Help us stop the TTIP.